Previously, we have replaced our radiator and then installed an aux pusher fan. In this episode, we will fix some oil leaks, leaking crazy, flushed the entire cooling system, as well as installed two transmission coolers. Well, this is the first startup after the fix. I have filled the coolant with just the plain water. Some rust has changed. All the stuff are ready. No obvious leak. There we go. Looking good. I just don't know obviously. I'll get it running for a while and see how it goes. Okay, uh, here's the status from yesterday. So after I started the engine, there uh, has been two leaks. One is from this area here. The U-joint is leaking. I over-tightened the other side of the aluminum 12 AN fitting and uh, destroyed the thread. So just bought another one and uh, overnight it arrived. Uh, now I'll put that on. Other one is here. Again, the joint is leaking. This one is easy. I just tightened it a little bit more to fix the leak. And other fittings looks to be just fine. Once I tighten, replace uh, that joint, I'll test that again. And here's the other side of that joint. There we go. This U joint is the original, but this 90 degree elbow is a new one. And let's see, it should not leak this time. And everything seems to be fine here. Or was it? It turns out this joint is still slightly leaking here. Let's see if there's anything I can do. I just tightened it a little bit more. If it still doesn't work, I might have to replace this joint again. Okay, uh, tighten all the transmission oil fitting. Have the coolant filled with just water. The hydraulic lines tightened. Hydraulic oil filled up. We are ready to start this thing the second time. The first thing I put this start into the back. I already put the key into the arm position. Put it in the back. Here the click. Uh, this is the air level. Getting to the right height. So let's get it started. I'll tighten this gap here. There we go. A little bit of the blue smoke, less than yesterday, but uh, it's fine. We just had the leak on another fitting inside on the transmission cooler. So I tried to uh, switch the direction, see if it's better, or replace that. If it's just seeping a little bit, I can finish changing, flushing the coolant. But if it's still leaking like raining, then we'll have to wait for tomorrow. Let's see, I am starting it again. Three, two, one. Need to put in the start in the back. Okay. See how it's leaking? It's leaking. 
freaking crazy. Gotta stop right now. So I got some leaks again on the transmission oil uh, fittings. I bought some new better quality ones. Let's see the difference. So this is the new one. You may not see the difference, but I can feel it. It's very sturdy. It, the metal is significantly thicker. And this place had transferring. It's curved here. So overall make it very strong. I can feel it's heavier. Let's compare with the one that is leaking in there. Once I take that off. So this one is the leaking one. If you look inside here, you can see about uh, three quarters of it has the paint scratched. But a quarter of this has the paint on there. Which means a three quarter of it has good seal. But a quarter of this was not touching the other fitting going in there. Which caused the leak here. And I guess it's okay for the overall quality. It's uh, relatively sturdy. But this is the main issue causing it to leak. So anyway, I'm putting in a better one. Okay, it's so the third time we're trying to start the engine. The first time we got two oil leaks. Uh, the second time we still got one more transmission oil leak. And the third time I changed the fittings on them. Let's see if it leaks. Put the start into rear. Fans running as expected. We, run, we are turning it on. Very little smoke this time because I preheated the engine with uh, oil cooler and uh, block cooler. And uh, let's see you later. So finally, after many, many turns of back and forth, I got the oil wind problem solved. There's no oil now. I mean, obviously, the engine is running. Side, but there's no oil. Yeah, it's not that good. The fan is already running. It looks pretty, pretty good. No leak so far. I will have the ending run for an hour or so. So we need to flush the coolant uh, several times. This is the second time of flushing it. What we need to do is to open this pad cut on the radiator. And then later on, there's another one on the engine. Okay, second time flush. Filled with water just drained and then filled it again with coolant cleaning agent. I'll show you a picture what about uh, right there. And uh, filled the rest with tap water again. So I'm gonna start the engine, let it run for 60 to 90 minutes according to the instructions. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the last few steps. Let's see here. I have pre-mixed the uh, coolant with distilled water. This is the original distilled water bottle from Walmart. Still got one can of the coolant. This is the coolant I'm using that's recommended by the Cummins. Uh, yes, complete. Uh, you can look this up. Mix 50% with this coolant and 50% with the uh, distilled water. From what I can tell is it probably uses close to 10 to 12 gallons. So I mixed uh, 12 gallon of the 50-50 coolant. For the last round of the coolant flush, I added in about 9 gallons of distilled water and let it run for 20 minutes or so and then I drained all the water to do a final flush. And then I'll add in the 50-50 coolant mix. So here we go.
have filled up the coolant. I totally used the nine gallon. We have passed this window here, probably right here. But when I start the vehicle, it will drop a little bit. So I'm guessing maybe I need to add a little bit more. But one last thing after I filled the coolant I need to do is to add some DCA additive. Uh, so that will take up some space as well. One of the few last things that I need to do is change this coolant filter. Well, I'm doing a complete system flush, so might as well change the coolant filter. The first thing you need to do is to turn off filter right here so that coolant won't drain from this filter head while you bin this off. So as you can see, I'm turning it clockwise until it reaches to the end. Obviously, I'm turning on the other side, which is a bit more difficult to show, but it's the same thing as this. It's easier to reach. And then I will use a belt wrench to spin this off. It goes on just like this, and I'll need two hands for this. Oh, I have tightened this way too much. It's too difficult to take off. But anyway, you can see the damage here using the belt wrench. I won't tighten it that much anymore. Right, anyway, it's off now. Uh, still some cooling, but that's okay. I have a bucket and we need to catch all the cooling. And it's not right. But yeah, as you can see, once I turn off the valve, there's very little dripping from it. So the old one is WF2074, uh, which has 12 units of DCA. The new one, plus I'm on a rush of finishing this job, we are moving out of a campsite. So I had to get whatever I can get on my hands with a short time. So this is what I can get in two days from Amazon at WF2071 with two parts of DCA. So anyway, I will use that and add some additional DCA into the cooling system. Uh, spin down, give it a few turns, swing that a little bit. Time let's not tighten it that much, just in tight. It's printed on here, the mileage right here. That'll be good showing this way. I think it's tight, yeah, it's very tight. Any more tighter will be difficult to get off again. So yeah, that will do. I am replacing my transmission cooler today. I think might as well explain the transmission cooling system for you guys. Here is the Drayley transmission cooler. And this one is the old one that I'm taking off. You can see the wet all here. That's not from when I removed the cooler. That's just where it's dripping. And if you see closely, focus like there inside the coils. See, it's all wet inside the coils. So somewhere in the coil were leaking. I don't know where, it doesn't matter. I only had this for about three months. And it started leaking. And I have two actually. One of them leaks, this one. The other one was fine. Let's see the back. Well, the back looks okay. Can't see anything from here. Looks fine. But it's this facing somewhere in the coil was leaking and the oil just sprayed all over. The oil sprayed a little bit on my mud flap. I'll show you later. Okay, this is the old one. Yeah, the new one that I am putting it on, it's exactly the same. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed with the quality. I mean, only three months and uh, it failed. But anyway, I'm trusting it again. This is a warranty replacement. Let's put it on. Before I put the, um, let me explain my system. So the transmission is right here. It's Allison 3000. The original line is here. This one is the original line. Uh, I think it's coming in or maybe going back a lot. One way or the other. The other line is right here. The 90 degree bend. Why it's a 90 degree? Well, I'll show you. Here is my radiator. It's a brand new one. I just replaced it. But while I'm replacing the radiator, I remove the transmission cooling coil. So you can see the blue cap here. That's where the transmission oil used to go in and come out. The top one used to be in the 90 degree, so it can go down smoothly. The bottom one, I think, is the going back. Top one is going in. So I separated the transmission cooling system. Who's in? Two Dorelli fans, one's here and the other one resides right here. I haven't put on the new one yet. And then the line was connected, jointed from there and extended to here. And then these two were working parallel. Is it parallel? Well, we got the oil in from here. I have a thermostat 
you can see the wires connected and then it goes out from to this line and then it connects to the input of this sterile cooler and then on the out it goes from here no actually the the other one haven't connected it goes here and then connects to this one here and then goes back to the oil return to back to the transmission but the reason why I'm doing this is because the, with the original setup, the transmission oil can only be as cool as the coolant is because it's cooling using the coolant. Most of the time, it will actually be hotter than the coolant. And the coolant, before I change the new radiator, it's not cooling very well. I'm getting like 200, uh, 210, even 220 degrees sometimes while i'm climbing the hills and during that time the transmission will only be be hotter like 230 that's way too hot so i separated the, the cooling of the transmission oil to here and it had worked uh, flawlessly before the leak of course it, it was cooling to 180 pretty much all the time only when i climb the hill it will go to like 190 but that's it and also after replacing the radiator the uh, coolant was a lot better uh, i used to go to like i said 220 now it pretty much stays at uh, 180. got the input line from the transmission here and what is this well you might ask this is the thermostat underneath and I have a foam wrapped with aluminum tape and underneath is the thermostat's trigger in the on and off of these two big fans here and each of them is 800 CFM uh, 12 AM fittings right here and why we need this foam and uh, aluminum tape here? I heard some other YouTubers saying that these thermostats may trip late because, well, you got uh, dissipation of heat over here in this metal fittings and all that. So we want to retain that heat so it will trip at the correct temperature. And this is what I did. 